Now another way of converting from an unstable ring structure like the one shown here, in which our two larger substituents are both in axial positions instead of equatorial, is to do something called a ring flip, which is depicted by this figure. Now I realize that this figure probably isn't all that illuminating, but I have fortunately been able to locate a great video on ring flips on YouTube. To follow along with what this video shows, you really need to have a three-dimensional model kit, which I invite you, my students, to buy or borrow. For students who are taking this class from me in person, I have model kits that you can check out from me for free in my office, and I'll let you use them on exams. This is a molecular model of a di-substituted cyclohexane, and in fact it is 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane. Here's one methyl group here in an equatorial position. Here's another methyl group right next door, and it's pointing straight up from the ring, so that makes it axial. And you can also make out that this would be the cis isomer. And what we try to do when we draw chair conformations on paper is represent this model as best we can, even when we're looking at something that's two-dimensional. And that's what this piece of paper is all about. This is one of the documents you have access to in Chapter 3, and it shows for plain old cyclohexane the two versions of its chair conformations, one flipped relative to the other. The idea being that bonds that are axial in one chair become equatorial once you've done that flipping. So it's a lot easier to see what that flipping is all about if you actually have a, ma a model here to manipulate. So if I grab this ring by two carbons that are on opposite sides, and one carbon is going to be slightly above the other one. Uh, they're not all in the same plane. And if I take the one that's kind of up and push it down, and at the same time take the one that was uh, down and push it up, uh, I can accomplish this uh, ring flipping here. And so if I now spin this around a little bit, you can see what we've got here are green bonds that are axial, and the pink bonds are equatorial. And if I go back to where I started, uh, if you had noticed, uh, the ring started off with the pink bonds being axial and the green ones being equatorial. And I can flip this back and forth and go between those two versions of that chair conformation. So when this thing flips, all the bond angles change. And specifically, axial becomes equatorial. So here we are again with pink axial bonds, and it doesn't matter which two carbons I grab as long as they're on opposite sides of the ring. It's very easy to manipulate this and make it do that little flipping. And notice that the two methyl groups, no matter which version I have, one is going to be axial and the other equatorial. Uh, I can just choose which is which by which conformation uh, I choose to leave this in. But we are again trying to represent that idea on paper often, and so it requires a little bit of artwork but this is a very good template here for allowing you to draw reasonable looking chairs and also to show clearly which bonds are up, which ones are down, which ones are equatorial, and which ones are axial. So now I'm going to show you the steps of how to do a ring flip. Step one, draw the mirror image bow tie of your original ring. Step two, on your new ring, move every substituent one position clockwise or counterclockwise. It really doesn't matter which way you go whichever one you like the most. Step three, draw each substituent onto its new position on your new ring. If it was equatorial before, then make it axial on the new ring. If it was axial before, then make it equatorial on the new ring. Which brings us to a question. Do a ring flip on molecule A and draw the new ring flipped conformation B in the box provided. Here's how we would do that problem. Once again, I've drawn molecule A here. Let's go through the steps. Step one is draw the mirror image bow tie. So I'm going to ignore the substituents, this T-butyl group and this bromine group, and just look at the bow tie. What would the mirror image bow tie of this one look like? It looked like this. Now I realize that I've drawn this much, much larger than the one on the left, and the reason will become apparent shortly. But you'll notice that the one on the left is kind of slanting a little bit uh, from top to bottom, left to right, and this one is slanting in the opposite direction. So indeed, as best as I can concoct one, this is the mirror image bow tie of the chair shown to the left. Now in order to make clear the next step that we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and number all of the atoms in my original cyclohexane ring. Step two of our process is we have to change or shift every single one of these substituents one position 
either clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter which one we go. I personally prefer clockwise, so what that means is this. You'll notice that carbon one is in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to shift it one position clockwise, which is going to be in the lower right hand corner. Carbon two was in this middle position. I'm going to shift it one position to the right or clockwise, which means that it's now going to be in the upper right hand corner. You'll note that all of the rest of the positions follow suit. Three, four, five, six. So I follow through with step two. In order to move on, I'm going to go ahead and draw my bonds on carbons one and three until I determine which position each of these substituents go on. Now I'll move on to step three. Step three states that I'm going to put every one of my substituents in my first ring at their new position. If they were equatorial before, then I switch them to being axial in the new position, in the new ring. If they were axial before, then I switch them to being equatorial in the new ring. So let's take a look at this. You'll note that bromine here is equatorial and it's pointing down. Where does it go? Well, of course, it's attached to carbon one. It was equatorial in my ring on the left, hence it's going to be axial in my ring on the right. It is also axial down. Note that the direction doesn't change. It was pointing down before. It was down equatorial. Now it's still down. It's just down axial. Now we'll look at this T-butyl group. You'll note that it is equatorial in this ring. And it's equatorial pointing down. So where in the world does it go? Well, it's still going to be attached to carbon 3. It still has to point down, but you'll note that now carbon 3's down is axial. So that is where my tert butyl group is. Now, the reason I drew this whole ring so large is because I couldn't really fit a tert butyl group in a line bond format here, so I had to draw it out. This brings me to my next and final question. Do a ring flip on molecule C and draw the new ring flip conformation D in the box provided. I'm not going to provide you with the answer, but we'll let you instead do it on your own. Now that seems like a wonderful place for us to stop. This is the end of our chapter two lectures on an introduction to organic molecules. I hope that you'll stay tuned and watch our upcoming lectures on additional information about the world of organic chemistry. Until then, have a wonderful day.